You are just a container. Let me tell you why. Every one of us at some point would have momentarily felt empty inside. It could have happened anywhere when you were at work or when you were just talking to your partner about your day. In this video, I'm going to attempt to define that feeling of emptiness and in doing so, define us and how it affects some of the decisions we make and the lasting consequences of such decisions. Emptiness by its nature could be viewed as containing nothing inside or simply put, it just holds nothing. But with the shift of perspective, one would find that emptiness could have a wide range of meanings. It could mean something that lacks a sense of purpose or meaning, or an object just not being occupied, or just the mere absence of something. If this is the case, then emptiness implies that there is a container, and that container is you. But is emptiness or absence the same thing? If the container is you, then the emptiness can be defined as the container containing nothing and absence can be simply defined as the lack of something that was expected or desired to be there by you. Now, this difference has a significant impact on how you experience life. For example, if you are aware of the feeling of emptiness inside, then whatever event happens next, the emotions associated with that event that you experience will fill that void and you eventually make meaning out of it. Maybe this is what it means when people say, let life happen to you or be open to life. But if you misconstrued that emptiness inside with the absence of something, then you are already biased. And that is what we all mostly do. Unlike the monks and yogis who do everything to find this emptiness or this nothingness within, we, the progeny of our cities, find ourselves in extreme discomfort with this emptiness. It is the source of what D.W. Winnicott called the nameless dread. So depending on who you are and how you were brought up, the experiences of the past will dictate as to what you think is absent, and you chase that. To put this in context for you, let's look at this person Abby. Just like you, she is also a container. Abby was brought up by a very dysfunctional family that made her feel neglected. Abby could never emotionally open up to her mother as she was constantly compared with other kids and asked, why aren't you more like them? Abby began telling herself that her mother does not love her because she wasn't good enough and she now filled her complex container with the absence of love. So when Abby reached her legal age, she believed that her kids would fill that container for her as they would love her unconditionally. So she met a man for that sole purpose of procreation and had a child and then just discarded him. Let's call that child Debbie. Now remember, absence is the lack of something that was expected or desired to be there by you. So she desired love and expected her child to give her unconditional love that she so badly needed. Self-consumed, Abby failed to realize that it is that child that requires that care and support and not her. Soon this realization dawns on her and she begins to get withdrawn from the reality and the responsibility of motherhood. Now every kid needs a balance of nature versus nurture when they grow old. But Debbie only experiences the harsh reality of nature as her mother was absent to nurture her. Debbie is now not brought up by her mother but instead is brought up by the harshness of reality. She is now lost and needs to make meaning of her experiences growing up alone and without guidance. Just like Abby, Debbie grows up filling the emptiness inside her with the absence of love. But unlike Abby, Debbie decides to fill that emptiness by loving herself. Her container is now full of love and she was able to pour that into her child when she became a mother. 
Now, this was a happy ending, right? Maybe this is why even most religions say, love thyself. In other words, how can you love someone else if you just don't have love in you? Take a moment to think about how many such children are out there who were conceived for all the wrong reasons and how many of them ended up like Debbie. Based on the principles of object relations, if you feel the absence of something in you, then there are one of two ways in which you would react to this. One, you would fill the container through controlled emptiness like Debbie or fill the emptiness greedily to not feel the absence of something you see in there. Abby filled her emptiness greedily by having a child for something she thought was absent in her and emotionally discarded the child when she didn't get it, like how she discarded her man. Ask yourself, what is the absence you see in the emptiness inside you? Do you see the absence of love, the absence of success, or maybe even the absence of identity? Whatever the answer is, that emptiness needs to be filled by you. And having children to fill that container inside you is not the answer. And to feel that feeling of emptiness inside is okay. It's best not to misconstrue it for the absence of anything. As sometimes, it's okay to just let it be. Thank you for sharing your ideas and supporting the channel with suggestions on what you want to see. I pray you continue to do so. I also want to thank the anonymous YouTube user who allowed me to use a part of their own life story in this video. I say parts as I have merged it with another story to keep her anonymity. Thank you, anonymous user, for being a Debbie in this world. If you like this video, please hit the like button and share it with other parents out there. And if you haven't subscribed to us yet, please hit the subscribe button and support our growing channel and welcome in advance to the Uncommon Sight community. Thank you for watching.